terms of like you know trying to turn this back around to some of the musical elements what what elements of the biz it's easy to look back and go what what was great about the the golden mm. era of whatever music you choose to be don't forget there are people now going the golden era of dance music or something you know we're all everybody mm. has a golden era yeah what stuff rather than talk about the negative stuff what is better now okay well that's a, just just to emphasize that point about the 70s which well, certainly ain't music no. <laughs> so the 70s with all that kind of political correctness and all the kind of racism blah 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 and they, they always tarnish the 70s as being that kind of dodgy era if you want to talk about proper you know kind of defamatory stuff in the 80s that all that hair metal stuff from 80 to I know it went on in the 70s as well but they really went for the jugular didn't they in the, in the 80s for hair metal doing about the summertime girls and the Dave Lee Roth things and all those lyrics about still of the night and you know the snake in your back door and blooming log in your fireplace that, that was absolutely <laughs> chaos lyrics in Goontown it's going log on log in your fireplace Gene Simmons I'll put my log in your fireplace oh, you know okay. I'll, I'll go through her like a hot knife through butter you know those lyrics were just like you look at them now you think yeah. god no it's one would sing them in through now. the outdoor in through the outdoor yeah, back yeah. door man you know all that stuff was absolutely rife in the 80s and it kind of Eventually, it's like, no, grunge killed that off. You know, yeah. that was one good thing grunge yeah. did do, is kill off all that. Yeah, it just and yet encouraged that's... everyone to take her in. And, and, yeah. And, and wear baggy self. jumpers, which is very comfortable, actually, I find. But Yeah, it was a, it was a weird one, wasn't it? Because the, 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 some of the lyrical content, I mean, I can't decide which is worse. The, the a, a, a really bad sort of uh, get, your, get your tackle out, get your wedding vegetables out kind of you know, glammy, kind of like, you know, check chicks and strippers and whatever, you know, like Girls, Girls, Girls by, you know, Motley Crue. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of interesting because that's that's probably a bad example because that was actually what they were doing. It was just literally a story about one of their days, you know, then you know, fair play. Um, if that's what you, you know, that's what you're doing, that's what you're doing. But um, at the same time, there was a certain amount of insincerity about a lot of lyrics in that era as well. And I think one of the cringiest things is probably more like a really bad sort of uh, attempt at a radio rock song with really bad, drippy lyrics. I mean, absolutely nothing. They're equally it, it as... Lost, it as, fell, as, off, the, as it fell off the radar, didn't it? I mean, it, songs went down to eight words. You know, literally, you had to have whoa radio, chick, summertime girl, blah, blah, blah. It got in the night or whatever. It just got so banal because that's what was getting, yeah. you know, cherry pie and that kind of stuff. I mean, it's... You know, if I, if I was a ba- if I was back then, if I'd have had the success of some of those bands, and my biggest hit was something like Cherry Pie, I would not want to be singing that when I'm sixty. You know, I wouldn't. Want, I would. I just wouldn't feel. But power to kiss because they still do it. You know, yeah, they, that's true. they sing all that kind of stuff. I suppose you have to kind of just disassociate yourself with what you was then to what you are now and just go hey it's just a song you know isn't it a great example of something though that the, the world these days seems to be like digital it's like either it's right or it's wrong or it's on or it's off or it's yeah. yes or it's no yeah. and there are gradients of everything I mean Kiss you kind of get you go well it's kind of almost like a parody of itself you know and the, 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 there is an element that some people genuinely believed what they were singing was like going to change the world and it's like no you're singing about Mm. dance poles and, and, and stuff like yeah, that yeah rock and roll's going to save the world yeah um, it's, 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 it's what it is you know I mean I think nowadays you, you we're probably going on to a tangent here but you're talking about songs have to have some kind of thought provoking statement about them and you have to be very careful how you do this and do that because well, we, I remember when we did the Christmas song you know the, the mini skirts at the office party I knew that would be controversial, but it was meant to be about a time when what girls wore me. It wasn't about whoa, hey, mini skirts and the, you know, it, it wasn't about that. It was about the fact that back in the day, it's a great that was seventy a, sound was, effect. Mini that skirts, was a fa- that high was, karate. That was a fashion statement. People wore blooming short skirts, and everyone goes, oh, you know. And I, um, we got a call saying, um, just one thing any chance you could change the first line of that song before we take it to radio because radio 2 won't play it and and i went no it's done and we had to fudge it and we had to take dates and nuts at the office party so we took dates and nuts on the coffee table which is the second verse which is nice and safe although nuts could be deemed a if, if you do it right we had to somehow fudge that in as the opening line of the song 
just to get it on the radio because it was deemed politically correct then. <laughs> they I'm didn't play it anyway, did they? Said the man who's probably watching TikTok with these girls shaking their asses wearing bikinis with these baboon asses and with all their bits hanging out. I'm thinking that's way worse than it was in the 70s. Mm. In the 70s, they might not have worn a bra and wore a miniskirt, but look what's going on in TikTok and look what. Yeah, it's Miley way Cyrus. Worse. Miley Cyrus, yeah, there you go. Alexa Kimbo. Yeah, Madonna, like... all that lot. It's way worse, and yet that's all over social media. Yet we went miniskirts at the office party. Oh, Ooh, that's a bit, a bit near the knuckle, that is. You know? oh, I just find it a load of old bollocks. It's to fucking be bollocks. A load of old bollocks. I can't be so we don't do that in Cats in Space, do we? We make sure that. If, it goes to a point because obviously you, your singer's got to sing it, but you've got to, you've got to be real with it. You've still got to be real, I mean, you know. I mean, you you do sing, you do have love songs and ballads and things like that. You of know, I know they're do. in there, but but the it emotes. But the, but the, but the emotes. Space is more of a storytelling band anyway. It is, but it yeah, has to emote. There's, there's, there's pictures. Yeah. Yeah. Thing, we, we haven't got a love song, have we? I think Million Miles. Scar, is no, possibly. Scars is a love song, really. Although it's got the sin. It, it, there's always that tongue-in-cheek kind of edge to it which is like yeah it's not a love story like oh I love you let's live forever in the autumn whatever yeah. September Rain was was a love song which Mick wrote the lyrics for that yeah. predominantly and it, and it is about his marriage it's a beautiful song so that's there are a few but mm. normally we'll, we'll yeah. we stick the knife in somewhere <laughs> we, we piss over the chips at some point in the song you know? the general gist with your song writing is that it starts off as a love song and then a clone appears <laughs> <laughs> or or a witch, or perhaps. a witch, yeah. But I mean, Million Miles yeah. is a love song. Think about it. it. it yes, it is. A, it we just be, put them can, in a spaceship, and if you like Million Miles, it's along the bottom there. So you can watch <laughs> yeah, it. Can you click on this? Yeah, click on this. Click on one of our two videos there. Um, that James made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that he made. But um, <laughs> crazy. But, yeah, I think I um, that can be. There's different angles and levels to Million Miles and you can read into it in many ways. The strong yeah. point of that is, do you remember? The minute you put remember into a lyric, it immediately will make people remember something. You know what I mean? It's that yeah. simple. It does what it does on the tin. But it therefore emotes with people going, oh, remember this. Because you, you're emoting to another time. Yeah. You know, And it's a very strong thing to do. And I think that's what... We try and emote our songs, whether it's about a clown or a witch or a love song or Mad at Tea Party or whatever. That the whole point is trying to emote something when people hear it and they latch onto it. Mm. If they latch onto it, that song becomes really big for them, rather than going, "Hey, let's go down to the beach on a hot summer's night with the California girls." It's like, yeah, well, we're not really all going to do that in Wigan, are we? But you there's know? a level no. of Britishness about about so many elements of the band as well. I know that the style yeah. and the genre could be seen as like it was very popular in America and in, 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 on American radio. But I mean, even then, it was still foreigner who were like 75 percent british and you know that you know journey as a mm. jonathan kane I, I, he's, it was jonathan kane's british isn't he was jonathan the babies kane. jonathan kane no he's a yank isn't he so no, no, jonathan, they're all american uh, the, the babies uh, babies are english john yeah. um well, jonathan kane was john wait john wait was john yeah, wait but, but, no, they're all English. The, yeah. the babies were. But anyway, but they, you, know, based you, in, you could well, always. They're based in America. They're based in America, but John Waite was from. Um, he's from Lancaster, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Lancaster. I mean, well, I mean, Free and Bad Company was, you know, a great, great example of doing. American yeah, it went to America, yeah. Songs, but, but it was all Brits. I mean, so the thing I was thinking, though, is that there is a very British element to. You look at the guitar playing that you two do, it harks back to the sort of pre. Um, fret, fretboard mm. frenzy sort of that's because we era. can't do it <laughs> <laughs> can't and don't want to I can't get my fingers in that shape but it's you know there is a, there's a there's a there's a great sort of classic feel to it but it but it also never feels out of date it it's tuneful feel, wouldn't it you know, it doesn't it never feels to me personally and I never listen to it and go you know well you know it's it's, it's it just feels still feels fresh it's it's like it's going back to the that bit from how it come was. back and mm. stood up on its own as, as being what it was, which is... Well, know, things go through trends. So you, you got... And a classic thing would be the 80s and the 90s. The guitar playing then had to follow a certain trend. And um, it's like Phil Collin said, I can tell you any, any um, guitar solo, what year it is in the 80s, by the fact that it will be for a Rockman 
or it would be through a Galen Kruger or it would be through whatever and it will have to have a chorus sound on it and it will have to follow a certain thing and that is so true the guitar solos all went through this kind of it, to make that appear in a song that was going to go in the charts it had to follow a very very tiny narrative mm. and it had to and it had to be that otherwise it would be wrong that's why Michael Schenker never had any chart hits because he was still Schenker you know, yeah. Gary Moore was a bit of an exception to the rule. Brian May was in Queen, who were a different kettle, but everybody else. You know, now, if you listen to those solos now in the 80s, it's like, you know. Being in the jam jar, isn't it? Yeah, it's just a horrible sound. And you and it goes full set, full circle. And now what you hear now with these yeah. bands like Winery Dogs and Revolution Saints and your Doug Aldrich's, they're all playing proper old school yeah. Strat and Les Paul yeah. sounds, albeit at a million notes an hour, but... They're using proper sounds again, yeah, yeah. and it's gone full circle. So, you, and the, if you know it's going to go full circle, cut the middle bit out and just stay where you are because it will come round again. It's like waiting for the next bus, isn't it? Don't worry, just miss that one. No one to come along. I've been it? in and out of fashion with the way I look and all of that so many times. <laughs> <It's> yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Ripped jeans. Well, I had ripped jeans way before the birds were splicing their jeans yeah. and the owls. The t it's like you do it. It goes round and round yeah. and every now and then. Well, yeah, we, 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 back we, in we have an old style, don't we? Yeah, your style and my style blend so well because we both come from the... You know your Joe Walshes and your 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 Brian Robertsons and your Brian Brian Mays, Mays, Brian Mays and all those kind of you know I know you don't Mick Ronson you know but even though you don't try to play like Mick Ronson you have a natural Mick Ronson. Well, funny enough, vibe, Luke you know. Luke out of Earth Thunder, he came to see us down in Brighton once, and uh, afterwards he came up. Uh, I think it was it's when we did Broken Wing. Oh yeah, yeah. And apparently, for some reason, my, that could, my guitar solo and all of that in that song, he said, that was so Mick Ronson. Now, I've never been a Dave Bowie fan, especially yeah. back in the Ziggy days. Yeah, they just yeah. weren't on my... I was Alice Cooper. Yeah, the yeah. old Ziggy Stardust weren't me at all. He's like, really? I said, mm. well, I've never really listened to the man at all. He went, that was no, so Mick right. Ronson. I'm yeah. like, hmm. Ian Capel said that as well, didn't he? Straight away. But it's... it's it's that old school approach of playing because it's classic stuff. It's classic notes, plays for the song. If the songs are that style, you got to you can't just put a booming, buzzing B guitar solo over no, a song that sounds like it's course. come out of no. seventy six. I mean, the okay. solo should have a. It's, it's almost like an extension of the vocal part, if you like. Yeah, definitely. But a beginning, a middle, and end. Tell yeah. a story within a solo and keep instead it of just like. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah. the 80s solos did that. They'd all start yeah, off going, and you just know in about bar six, he, the producer's going, you've only got eight bars, by the way, mate. Oh, yeah. right. I've got to go on the last two that? bars. I've got to yeah. confess, though. I mean, I'm, I'm probably guilty of all the three of us that are here, and I'm the one the most guilty of, of, of buying into that whole thing because when I, I, I'm, I'm 58 now, so basically I was a teenager and I was just at that point when prog was kind of getting kicked out the door and Zeppelin couldn't, you know, mm. the, you know the, the In Through the Outdoor didn't sell that well when Van Halen 1 was flying out the door. And that for me was my sister and her hippie mates listening to Super Tramp and all that over there. And I was like, no, I want ACDC for my old school rock. Mm. And I want Van Halen doing... But the weirdest thing about it is I loved Van Halen, but I was never that bothered about the Willy Willy guitar bits. So, for example... I've always found eruption a pain, just a pain in the ass. I don't know why. I, I, it's it's clever. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. clever, but it's one track you had to go and get the vinyl and move on because it. it, it because ain't talking about love is coming in any minute. Yeah, now. exactly. Yeah, so yeah. ain't talking about love. Great, great riff. And as I, as my journey with Van Halen was was super long. I went right into the Sammy Hagar era, right right up to mm. Gary Sharon era. I've still had a thing about them, and. In terms of important bands to me, they were very important bands. They, were, they were game changers over Van Halen. What so, I, what totally set, set the bar. And eat. But what I always loved about his playing was I, I prefer, like, say, for example, an album like Balance um, or, or something like that. The Theorem. The, 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 mm. the, the best guitar the rhythm, ever. Not, the rhythm. One bit of that is just brilliant. The mm. ryth his rhythm playing oh, is superb. just immense. I'm not really because oh, yeah. he got kind of bored and his solos all started to sound the same. But be but in between that is you listen to something like Run Around or something like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. or or um, 
I don't know, even Spanked or something, some of the most... Oh, we had yeah, a little, we got a little bit with that yeah. sparkly guitar sound, which was a little bit annoying. You kind of wanted to go back a little Pound bit more cake, to the other one. Things like Pound that. Pound cake, yeah. 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 And it's because his timing, he's got, he was such a rhythmic player, because he, he, he was yeah. a drummer, wasn't he? Yeah, apparently. And so uh, to have that Gamma's rhythmic on. thing going, you've got to be really on your A-game. Yeah. He yeah. was he's a phenomenal I mean, back in, I, mean I, I would have had a fight with anyone in England if they said, I'm a bigger Van Halen fan than me. I was like, come on, then let's go, I'll prove I am. <laughs> Yeah. But they it, were game just, changers in 1979. When it I, was like a spaceship come yeah. down. It was. As I've got older, no, I, I find that it all got a bit cliché, especially when he goes on all the TV shows and all of that. Yeah. He does the same. Mm. Bing, bong, bing, rum, rum. It, it's almost mm. like he's become a car, he became a cartoon of himself. Yeah. But he still is probably one of the greatest guitar players ever. Yeah. Oh, definitely, because no one could really do what he was doing. They no. copied him, but they didn't have that. No. The, but it's the originality. I mean, he was doing that. But if you want to hear something, I'll tell you, the Gene Simmons demos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you yeah, heard it? Yes, I have, yeah. Mm. Right, well, this day was from 76, and yeah. he hadn't quite got on to the tapping. I think he still played the Les Paul then, wasn't he, as well? Oh, yeah, yeah I think. some of them early pictures. He's got Explorers, a Les Paul Jr., a gold top, you know, he used normal mm, guitars yeah. and he didn't really start striping up his guitars till around about 77, 78, just before mm. the album come out. Mm. But if you listen to the Gene Simmons uh, demos that he done in 76, I say it's pre a lot of the tapping and he is flying, right. but killer. Mm. And also, everyone, you know, we all know the stories now about Michael Anthony didn't play any bass on it, blah, 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 blah bollocks. Yeah. It's mixed where you hear Michael Anthony and what a bass player. Yeah. Mm. You hear, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you, anyone that's wants, to, you know, they're not bothered about Eddie with a tapping, listen to the Gene Simmons demos. They're yeah, fucking yeah. brilliant. Yeah. His yeah, playing I, is phenomenal. For 1976, he and was, not that old, I imagine. How old is he then? Uh, he's four years older than me. So he's what, 18, 19 then? So, 76, I would have been 15. So, yeah, he was probably about 19. So, he died last couple of years ago. He was 65. Yeah, I think he's four years older than me. Mm -hmm. So, I'm 62 coming up. There were two things that always struck me about Eddie Van Halen that were that drew me to him. He he was technically brilliant, but it was like he was playing a technically brilliant party. So it was a very happy. He used very very uplifting chords. It wasn't like the dark Black Sabbath kind of thing. You no, could be a Sabbath no, fan or whatever. Dirge, was was it? It? Yeah, it was all very much like party, and that's where well, they were the ultimate party, the ultimate band. party band. Mm. The, the other thing that about him that I thought was amazing was um, uh, the. I've, I've managed to track down some of those isolated guitar tracks that ridiculous but what Eddie Van Halen I, one of the most underrated things I think Eddie Van Halen brought was it was very much like wow you know it's like metal face you know like and it got to the point where it was like oh like Judas Priest and, and that kind of stuff and suddenly he's doing coming on and doing stuff that nobody else could do and smiling yeah, yeah, and he yeah. had that look he just bounced on the stage and went Bring, yeah. Check this out, and you were like, "Hey, that's what I want. I don't. I. I, I Where's want, the grimace? I want, yeah, yeah. I want to be at that party. That's where I want to be." And that drew you in. And then only later on, when you got to some of the later albums, you know, I mean, there are bits of so even the albums that people say, you know, like great Diver Down. I think it's got some fabulous moments yeah, on it. It, yeah, might not be the most, high. it might not be the most complete album. And what's sense. that one? Is it Secrets? Uh, the yeah, Secrets, it's yeah. It's yeah. Da, da. Swing and groove that the man's got. Mental, yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. And yeah. I think a lot of that comes from piano playing as well, because he used to write a yeah. lot on the piano and then he used to trans. Did you know, there's a, the, uh, Davey Roth said a story in the press years ago that Eddie's party trick was he had a, he had a wall in his yard that was like a climbing wall with bricks sticking out and bits missing and stuff. And he would go up to the wall and people would think, oh, he's going to climb up the wall. But he would turn his back to the wall and go up using his elbows, elbows and his heels. Yeah. Mm. yeah, that's a bizarre thing as well, isn't it? But he the, the, he, he patented the old flippy out. He, 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 there's a patent that exists for Eddie Van Halen where, when he he did one tour where he flipped his guitar up and a piece of wood dropped down and, a, and like a bracket and he could play the. the oh yeah, he plays it flat on and then yeah, he folded yeah. it flat yeah. back up again. That's patented. 
A little bit of trivia for you. There's also an a patent is owned by Michael Jackson for some shoes. Uh, you know the Billy Jean video where he's on the black and white floor yeah. and he keeps leaning in and out. He did that with oh, these shoes. He yes. invented these shoes. Yeah. He could clip, and as he walks across, he can clip them in like bi like bicycle clip type thing. Yeah. Well, it's more like a sort of um, they dig into the yeah, floor and they can. It, it, I don't know, like they're, they're spikes. Like, it, yeah, it's it's like um, it looks like it's like an articulated lorry kind of gate thing where he just slides it in, it clips in, and in, yeah. and, he, and he can do all that leaning. And he patented that because you see a lot yeah. of mime artists with that now, don't you? Yeah. And that one that Dynamo used to have, where he had the rod up the back of the leg, which meant he could lean back. Right. That's how he did it on one leg. How's oh, he doing it on one leg? That. Never saw it. Yeah. I had, his, I had one of his dancers live in my house for a month, but I never saw anything. I've seen anything with Dynamo. How weird is that? Crazy. I'm sure there's a story that I could probably explain there. It's probably not interesting enough, but yes, I did have a guy live in my house. Maybe for he a was month there, but he was just invisible. Because <laughs> he's yeah. a kind of guy. Yeah, there you go.